please welcome Nancy Conrad and the award-winning student inventors from the Conrad Foundation. Well, I found it rather interesting this evening that we began our journey tonight together with a virtual trip to the moon. And I would like to introduce you to my late husband. His name is Pete Conrad. And 40 years ago today, he was strapped into a Saturn V rocket for a journey to the moon. He was two-thirds of the way there right now as we speak. His landing site was the Ocean of Storms moon, and it was a pinpoint landing on the moon. It's a great story. Check it out. Not a lot of people know that the third guy on the moon is Pete Conrad. Now you do. <laughs> well, Pete's journey into the history books wasn't that easy. He had kind of a bumpy ride. He got expelled from school in the 11th grade. He couldn't read, and he couldn't spell. Anybody know what was wrong? You got it, dyslexia. He went on to become an aeronautical engineer. You don't have to read or spell. Perfect. And went on to become a part of our space program. He flew four flights in space, uh, including the first space station, which we also saw a space station this evening. Now, I have said this uh, many times, and we've heard references to it. The education system that was in place during Pete's years of being educated was a system that was created for a manufacturing-based economy. It was pretty much a Cuisinart. You stick the kid in, you shove in a bunch of facts, you spit them around, you spit them out at the universe and hope to God he makes something out of himself. The bad news is that's our system that's in place right now. But we don't live in a manufacturing-based economy anymore. We live in a global economy where technology rules and kids can talk to each other on the internet all night long and teams can cooperate and teams of kids can work together whether they're in China and India and the United States. We live in an age of innovation and our education system just hasn't quite caught up. So now what happens if you let these kids, high school students, for example, just create and harness that energy and allow them to work on real world problems with other kids. And heaven knows we have created enough problems for these kids, they could be working on them forevermore. And that's what we have done. We have created the Spirit of Innovation Awards program where we challenge teams of high school kids to actually go in and solve real world problems, whether it's aerospace, energy, environment, oceans, water, nutrition. And they come up with these incredibly amazing ideas because kids don't know you can't do it. And we're not gonna tell them. So we've combined technology, we've combined science, innovation, entrepreneurship, and education into one multidisciplinary platform and offered it to kids as a way to solve problems. Now, our kids are so smart. These, this is a team of kids out of Katy, Texas. They created a way to harness the energy of the ocean out of the heat vents at the bottom of the ocean. The chairman of the Federal Energy Regulatory Commission reached out to these kids and wants to help them take their product to the marketplace. These kids are in patent, as well as some of the other teams that you're going to be meeting today. And I'm pretty excited to present some of our teams of kids to you because there's great hope, guys. We can solve these problems with these kids. I'd like to introduce you to some of our Conrad laureates. And our first team up is Final Frontier Apparel. They're in the Schmata business. Here you go. Hello, my name is Jonathan Bacha. This is Madison Friedman. This is Aaron Rusheen. We are Team Final Frontier Apparel, and we designed our vision of the spacesuit of the future. The Conrad Foundation challenged us to design a product that was both profitable and that would further space exploration. In addition, the Conrad Foundation introduced us to entrepreneurs and, and uh, industry professionals from a, wide variety of and from a wide range of technical fields and opened our eyes to a world beyond grades and test scores and a world that really values creativity and innovation. 
We've got a special treat for the audience tonight because, you know, over the break I went and I, I asked one of Charlie Chang's models uh, if he would be so kind as to model our suit design. And he's also the first, the first Conrad competition winner. So please welcome our model, Mr. Michael Akimi. Woo! There we go. When designing our spacesuit, we looked at the shortcomings of today's spacesuit designs. Today's spacesuit designs are highly inefficient and extremely cumbersome. When, <laughs> when, in, when astronauts are in space performing specific space tasks, today's spacesuits are extremely immobile and only allow for a short range of mobility. Today's spacesuits are also very heavy. When launching s materials to space, saving weight saves money. In addition, today's spacesuits Designs do nothing to combat the effects of muscular atrophy on astronauts in a zero-gravity environment. Here is Madison Freeman to talk about how we combated these effects in our spacesuit design. Thank you, Aaron. I uh, hope the mic wasn't too cumbersome for you. Um, um, okay, so our suit design incorporates what's called mechanical counterpressure. Now, this system uses highly elastic materials like Dacron, Mylar, and Nomex to basically squeeze the body of the astronaut and, in doing so, simulate atmospheric pressure. Now, what this does, and it'll be demonstrated by Michael right here, is it allows the astronaut to have a greater degree of mobility. Thank you. And it allows the astronaut to be more productive when they're performing extravehicular activities like spacewalks, walking on the moon, walking on Mars, or, you know, repairing a satellite. Uh, our suit also incorporates electro-muscle stimulation. Now, what this system does is it has little electrodes placed on various positions on the suit, and then they actually fac facilitate um, muscle stimulation. Uh, what that does is over a period of time, these electrical shocks are going to allow the astronaut in a zero-gravity environment to maintain the majority of his muscle mass. Um, also, this relegates a lot of the health effects and health concerns that astronauts may face in space. And we, we actually presented these concepts at NASA's Ames Research Center. And we've also presented to the American Institute of Aeronautics and Astronautics. And we've also uh, submitted a provisional patent. And none of this would be possible without fabulous Nancy Conrad and her foundation. So thank you so much. And here's Nate Schloss to talk about his wonderful invention as well. Hi, I'm Nathan Schloss from Team Ast. Uh, we came up with the concept to use electromagnetic forces for non-chemical propulsion. And through the course of uh, researching and coming up with, the, with this idea, we learned a lot more than we could have ever learned about chemical proportion, pro propulsion and electromagnetic forces than we would have ever learned in a classroom setting. And one of the coolest things about the Conrad Award is the Innovation Summit. And at this summit, our team had access to industry leaders and these leaders heard our ideas and were able to give us feedback. And one of the coolest things, we presented our idea and we showed how we could apply it to moon propulsion. And then somebody's like, why don't you use it for Mars? And then we thought about it, and we could. And we're in talks, and it may very well be used for that. So. Hi, my name is Talia Neuromead. And I'd like you to do something for me today. Think back to when you were all in high school. What science classes did you take? Biology, where you learned about basic anatomy. Chemistry, where you learned about the periodic table of elements and chemical reactions. Or physics, where we all learned about electricity and magnetism and mechanics. Now take topics from all three of these disciplines and integrate them and come up with an idea. You set off a spark. For many high schoolers who do just this, the spark will flicker for a moment, but weaken and die. But for the other Conrad awardees and I, it was different. For us, the Conrad Award fed the flame. The Conrad Award had a vision for us. It saw the light in us, and it illuminated our future. Now, what does this mean? Seeing the stars in the sky, the light in the dark, is what put men on the moon, and it's what the Conrad Award has done for us. So what did we do for the Conrad Award? There were three parts. The first was we identified a problem. For my team, Michael and I, that meant that we looked at <laughs> the present day monitoring systems in space and we realized that they were cumbersome and uncomfortable and they held a considerable amount of weight, which is precious when you're going to space. So we came up with a system 
that would resolve these issues. Second, or third, we created an ROI, return on investment, and we determined that this was possible and it was beneficial for us to do this. Now, what was our solution? We had a vision for a platform as a pair of goggles or a pair of glasses that would measure all your vital signs, like blood pressure, blood sugar, red blood cell, temperature, and pulse. And together, because of its proximity to the brain, an eyes and a platform of glasses would be the ideal way to do this. Now, what did the Conrad Award do for me? The Conrad Award did four things. First of all, it taught me or encouraged me to ask questions. Second, it showed me what, with asking these questions and integrating so, concepts from different disciplines like chemistry, physics, and biology that we could come up with an idea that would have real-world applications beyond what we've learned in theory in the classroom. Third, it taught us to analyze these ideas to determine whether these ideas were worth pursuing. And fourth, it taught it was a challenge for us that we don't get in the classroom. Now, I'd like to ask you a question. Think back to 1969. In 1969, what was the average age of the engineer that helped Neil Armstrong take those first steps on the moon? Does anyone know? 23. 26. Now, 26. If you look at the science that fueled that mission, that science is in our high school classrooms today. That means that this science is at our fingertips of our high school students. So why can't a high school's team put a man on the moon? And the answer is they can but there's a reason they haven't. There are actually two reasons. The first is lack of innovation in our classrooms, and the second is lack of entrepreneurship. In our classrooms, our students are not taught to think big. They learn, but that means finding a formula and using a formula to find a solution for their homework. They don't look to the stars for their ideas. And second, is the idea that there is, no, there is no entrepreneurship. For those few select students who do have innovative ideas, they have no way to get these ideas in the market, to have their ideas seen by normal people. Because for them, they come up with an idea, but they don't know how to analyze the viability of this idea. They don't know how to determine if this idea is worth pursuing. They can't market it, they can't manage it, and they can't um, show people that this idea is a valuable product. And so the Conrad Award does that for us. It is based on the values of entrepreneurship and innovation. So it helps students to, see, to look to the stars for their ideas and it helps them to fly there. Thank you. Well, Einstein gets it. When you take science, technology, engineering, and math, and you combine it with spirit of innovation, you can create an innovative workforce for the future. That's the end game of what we're trying to do. We're trying to, to create a renaissance of innovation and entrepreneurship in very much the same way as the time when Pete went to the moon, when, when science and technology just was at its max, and we just decided it was time that all these kids actually get their moonshot. So we gave them permission to imagine. Thank you very much.